Hi, my name is Eric and I'm the Techie Agent and this is my full hands-on review of the Fitbit Surge. So I got the Fitbit Surge a couple of days ago and everything from the packaging to the unboxing experience, uh, setting it up on my computer, everything from beginning to end felt very quality, just screamed quality. And I could easily see why this was probably the most anticipated fitness wearable that's come out yet. So first let's just go over aesthetics and build quality. The device is very well built, it's very durable. So of course like all of the other fitness trackers on the market, this device uh, is built out of plastic and rubber and those very synthetic materials that you'll find on any device that needs to stand up to sweat and water and rain and all of those kinds of things. I was initially concerned that the glass screen would be the Achilles heel of this device as far as uh, build quality and durability goes, but after using it now for several days, it's a small enough screen that, uh, and durable enough screen really, that it hasn't scratched and hasn't uh, come into any sort of jeopardizing positions where it could have been cracked or broken. And speaking of the screen, it's very bright. You can see it in bright daylight. Uh, the viewing angles aren't great, so you do need to be looking at it straight on to be able to see it clearly, but uh, that really generally isn't an issue. The device is rather bulky, so uh, I imagine it has to be considering all of the sensors and features that it boasts, but that's something to take into consideration if you're looking for a more compact uh, fitness tracker. Setup was pretty easy. Fitbit includes a USB dongle that you plug into your computer, and then that allows you to wirelessly set up the device online. That whole process did take some time, but it was relatively easy. Let's take a look at some features, and let's start with GPS tracking. Now the GPS tracking mode is enabled anytime you go for a run or a jog. The great thing about having GPS on board on the watch is that you don't have to take your cell phone with you in order to track your GPS stats. So that's great to have it on board and then when you get home you can just synchronize it with your app and be able to view the route that you've taken and any of the other data that's been collected. So I just took it on a one mile route that I'm accustomed to and it came back with accurate data both on heart rate, uh, calories burned, and mileage tracked. So I was very pleased with my quick experience just taking this out for a quick mile jog. Fitbit says that their GPS accuracy is uh, dependent upon several environmental circumstances like sometimes weather uh, or if there's tall buildings around. My experience was that it was very accurate. I don't live around any uh, tall buildings and it was a cold but uh, otherwise clear day. And so uh, it, it spit back data that seemed to be very accurate and I was very pleased with how it performed. One of the other major features of this device is the heart rate monitor, and uh, it's basically an optical heart rate monitor that they call their Pure Pulse technology. Uh, but make no mistake, it is an optical heart rate monitor similar to what the Basis Peak uses or the, the Mio Fuse. So the first workout I put this through was a very intense hour-long workout that I've done many, many times before, and it generally uh, burns about a thousand calories per that hour. But the Fitbit came back and said that I'd only burned about 650 calories and that my heart rate had stayed below 160 beats per minute for the entire workout. So I immediately knew that something was wrong and uh, so I went back to the Fitbit website and looked up their frequently asked questions and this is what I found. You will likely have to wear your device, pull it about an inch away from your wrist. You won't be able to wear it right on your wrist if you're used to wearing it like that. You'll have to back it away to get an accurate heart rate. I found that when I did that, my results immediately improved significantly. When I made that adjustment, on my very next workout when I jogged the mile you can see here my heart rate statistics were much improved now obviously Fitbit is also tracking all day statistics so it's tracking steps the distance that you've walked calories burned floors you've climbed uh, just basically your overall active minutes while while you're uh, just doing your everyday activities it's not a whole lot I can say about it it seems like Fitbit has done a pretty good job collecting all of that data and then presenting it in a very tangible and easy way to understand in a way that's helpful I will say that it's not quite as completely accurate as Fitbit claims they say that uh, the sensor is really designed to not be able to pick up things like mo movement in the car and to calculate that as steps however I found that about a half an hour of driving on the highway 
uh, did give me about an extra 100 or 150 steps anytime I did that. One of the features that I really liked was Fitbit's multi-sport mode, and that is when you go to work out, you, know, you do have to let it know that you're getting ready to work out, but you can select what kind of workout you're doing, whether you're running, uh, whether you're doing a uh, boot camp kind of exercise or weightlifting or whatever it may be. And then Fitbit will customize the display on your watch and, uh, and then the data that it collects and how it presents it to be specific to whatever activity you're performing. So I thought that this was a very helpful way of collecting and then presenting the data that it collects. Now Fitbit claims upwards of seven days of battery life. I felt like it was maybe more like four and a half or five days before I was getting alerts on my inbox, letting me know that my device was running low on juice. Getting and receiving notifications and inbound call uh, notifications on it were pretty easy uh, and actually helpful. So I kind of have enjoyed having notifications right on the wrist. Now you can also set up the watch to be able to control the music player on your phone. However, you have to set it up using an always connected Bluetooth mode. And so uh, that tends to drain the battery of the watch just a little bit more. So I found that I haven't used that feature just because it feels a little bit gimmicky. You can set a silent alarm to go off where it vibrates on your wrist and wakes you up in the morning. The device will also automatically track your sleep and then you can go back and take a look later on to see the quality of your sleep and uh, how many times you've woken up through the night. And while it's not the best sleep tracking I've seen, it was pretty good. And two or three times an hour, the device will automatically sync to your phone if it's nearby and then back up all of that data on the app. My overall impression of this device is that everything that it does is good. It's not the best at everything that it does, but it's good at everything it does. There are other devices that you could argue that have better heart rate tracking or better sleep tracking, but I feel like the thing that makes the Fitbit Surge such an outstanding device is that even though it isn't the best at everything, it does everything very, very well. And it's this general ability to do everything so well that makes it the best fitness tracker on the market right now. There are certainly other niche devices on the market right now that do better GPS tracking, better heart rate tracking, or better sleep tracking. But this device does all of those things so well that uh, you don't feel frustrated using the device. And that's been my biggest problem using a lot of other wearable fitness trackers is that they do something great, but then everything else is frustrating. And so I didn't find that sense of frustration with the Fitbit Surge, and so it's definitely Definitely a keeper device in my opinion. So if you're looking for a premium experience in your fitness band, the Fitbit Surge does live up to its expectations. Hey guys, thanks for watching. My name is Eric and I'm the Techie Agent. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe to this channel. And then also check us out on Facebook or Twitter. We have a lot of other content that I put out on the Facebook or Twitter websites that you don't necessarily see here on YouTube. Hey, thanks again for watching. We'll catch you next time.